Well, welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. Um, this is Russ. Normally, you only see these bits and maybe a little bit of this sometimes, but um, today you've got the whole of me because we're doing um, a review for one year. I've had the machine just over a year now, and it's basically quite a good machine. Um, I've done during the past year, I've learned a hell of a lot about this machine and also a great deal about the way in which the Chinese operate and sell these machines on eBay. Now, anybody that's watching this and thinking about buying a machine, the only thing that I would say to you is, you're not going to get quite what you expected. If you buy a 50 watt machine, it'll be fitted with an 800 millimeter long 40 watt tube. It'll have a 50 watt power supply in it, but the tube that's fitted won't be very good. It'll work for a week, a month, six months, but be prepared when you buy one of these machines to think about the cost of replacing the tube because that's something you're going to have to do fairly shortly after you've purchased the machine. Because either the tube won't work or you'll be very unhappy with its overall performance. I kept my first tube for something like about six weeks. And then I purchased a second tube, which was, to be honest, not a lot better. Because at that point in time I was very naive and I didn't understand how the Chinese system worked. And I bought a replacement tube. And it was a replacement, almost like for like. So I replaced rubbish with a little bit better rubbish. And I soldiered on making my series up to about eight months where I tried to use the tube as a learning aid to try and investigate just how these machines worked, why the tubes operated in the way that they did. And eventually after eight months, I bought myself a proper upgrade. And as you might be able to see in the background, this white lump hanging out the back of the machine here is the extension for my proper 60 watt tube. Well I ordered a 60 watt tube but mm, because I'd done a little bit of negotiation beforehand with Mactron, the people that I bought it from, um, I think they saw the potential in, in this particular channel that you're watching and so in fact they sent me a 70 watt tube instead of a 60 watt tube. Now that was both great and not great at the same time because a 60 watt tube is 1200 millimeters long and I had built my little case here extended to take a 1200 millimeter long tube when the tube arrived and it was 1250 millimeters long was I going to complain? No. I finished up remaking this so I'm actually very lucky in that I've got a 70 watt tube and a proper 70 watt tube in this machine. I bought a power supply to go with it and it's an absolute dream. I just absolutely love coming out here, just turning on the switch, dialing in some numbers and I get what I ask for. Now I'm just going to show you this because this is the calibration chart for the machine. In other words, the power characteristic is actually quite steep up to this point here which is something in the region of about 25% power. So after this point, although the milliamps are going up nice and steadily, most of the gain in power is happening around this first third of the range, and then we got to another two thirds of the range, and we get to somewhere in the region of about 65% here. And this is 22 milliamps, which is the typical running current for a 60 watt tube and I'm up here just at about 70 watts. So the tube delivers exactly what it says and I'm extremely pleased with it. The only reason I'm showing you that characteristic is because a lot of people think that when I dial in 10% I get 10% power and when I dial in 20% I get 20% power and when I dial in 80% I get 80% of whatever the tube power is. It's a nice idea but it doesn't work that way because of the non-linearity of the output of the tube. So just remember that. The other big lesson that I learnt was not to overstress the tube. 
know what the current is that you're supposed to be putting through the tube. And make sure that you fit an ammeter to your machine. Now this is the best friend that you're going to have because it will stop you destroying your tube. Now when you're buying one of these machines you think you're buying a 50 watt machine but in fact you're buying a 40 watt tube. A 40 watt tube should be run at 18 milliamps maximum. A 50 watt tube at 20 milliamps maximum and a 60 watt tube typically 22 milliamps maximum. Those are typical figures that you want to stick to and then you will not be overstressing or what they call overdriving the tube. Now I did a very in-depth study part way through the year of how a tube works and if you just put too much current through the tube you start causing the gas within the tube to break down into carbon monoxide and oxygen. Now in a few moments you'll see the tube going pink, there we go. That pink is basically the, the nitrogen being ionised. It's got nothing to do with the CO2 that's in there. The fact that the nitrogen is excited brings the CO2 into play. Just because you've got a pink beam doesn't mean to say you're going to get power out at this end of the beam here. The pink beam is a necessary mechanism to make the lacing action happen. But the lacing action is all dependent upon the CO2 that's in the gas mix. Now, if you put too much current through your tube, then what happens is this nitrogen, excited as it is, has so much energy that it will start breaking down the CO2 into carbon monoxide and oxygen. And over a fairly short period of time, if you start overdriving your tube continuously, then you will destroy all the carbon dioxide in that tube. It will still glow pink, but you'll have less and less power coming out of this end of the tube. So just heed that warning, because I destroyed my first tube by doing exactly that, not understanding that 100% was in the machine, but you can't use it. So it's very important that you understand that you must control your machine by whatever the maximum current is. Now it could be that you get to your maximum current of 18 milliamps and you can only use maybe 50 or 60 percent as the number that you can use. Well 60 percent is the maximum number that you'll be able to use because 60 percent equals your maximum current. 100 percent will start shortening your tube life dramatically so just a warning don't go there. It wasn't until part way through my second tube that I realized my mistake and by then it was getting a bit too late anyway and my second tube was not a very good performer anyway. So basically that's the first and most important lesson I've learnt this year that the Chinese oversell their machines and you don't get what you're expecting. You need to buy the smallest machine that is big enough to do your job. This particular size that I've got here, 30 by 50, is actually a super size because everything is small and light and it moves around quickly, it hasn't got very much mass. The next size up starts to get bigger stepper motors, bigger beams, the, everything gets heavier and the whole thing has to get mechanically bigger because it gets bigger. So with this machine we've got 500 millimeters a second that we can use in this axis and 400 millimeters a second that we can use in this axis. And I do find that when I'm even running at four or five hundred millimeters a second on scanning I get very little problems of overshoot or anything like that. It's a really tight little machine to use. So I'm really very pleased with the mechanics of this. The other thing about it is, if you buy this as a 50 watt machine, it'll come with a 40 watt tube. And as you can see, with a small amount of extension over here, um, I can put 60 watts into this machine and all of a sudden it becomes an absolute dream of a machine. I bought my power supply direct from, um, from China and it cost me about just over £200 for a power supply and a tube. Excellent value for money. But it also cost me just over the same amount, £200 plus, to get it from there to here via DHL. It arrived in four days, super, but it doubled the price. But I'm not complaining. A couple of three other things I need to just quickly talk about. First of all, we can see down here, I'll just move my power measuring device. Oh, the last time you saw this instrumentation I probably had a rather expensive um, microprocessor controlled temperature display at the top here. I borrowed it off of a job and 
after six months the client came along and he wanted to build his machine so I had to take it off of my machine and redo this so what I've now got is a very cheap little meter here which is around about six or eight pound for a digital thermometer with its own temperature probe and it's got a relay in it so I can use it to control various things around the machine I'm using it to control lights for heating during the winter now this tank here as you can see it's got lots of water hanging on the lid it's just going to turn the whole of the machine off and I'm going to take the lid off of this tank it's a snug fit everything's a snug fit and normally what I'll do maybe once a month I'll take this out, use it as a dipstick, which is my thermometer, and I'll both smell and feel the water. Now this is distilled water. And we'll just take that off there for the time being, just because it's easier to move it. And we take a look in here. And what do we see in there? clean water. Now this is distilled water and I'll just taste it. Tastes perfectly fine to me. Um, it's clean, it's clear and would you believe it? It's been in there for a year now. I haven't even topped it up. It's getting a little bit low. So this is the first time in one year that I've opened this lid Some people are finding it difficult to get hold of, but the easiest place to get distilled water is at a pharmacy. So I just thought you'd be interested to know, uh, in this particular country, most of the year, we're anything between 10, 8. On a really hot day, we might get up to 28 or 30 degrees C, but that is very, very rare. You can see the ambient temperature in that water is 23. If we take a look, here's the return line here and you'll see that I've got my temperature probe strapped to the end here. So the water returning from the tube passes down here and over that NTC measuring probe. That's about five pounds for a five litres. But I've spent ten pound and it'll probably last me another year. So five pound a year is not bad for um, a water cooling system. As you can see it holds something in the region of around about nine litres, my system here. And I find that's perfectly adequate to deal with my 60 watt tube because I don't use it continuously. I'm not a production shop, I'm just playing. So it's very rare that I use my machine for more than maybe two, three hours at a time. Those with eagle eyes will have noticed that I have removed my extraction fan, my centrifugal bouncy castle fan. Um, a word of warning. A couple of weeks ago it started smoking. The fan stopped working. Why? Well I burnt the motor out. How did I do that? Well if we take a look here, something I forgot to do, I forgot to remove the grill and we got all lots of little bits of paper and dust stuck on the grill. So it was seriously restricting the airflow. Um, and I've had to replace it with a much more powerful fan now, um, purely because it was cheap and plastic and more powerful. The only problem is, the more powerful fan, it sucks better, but it also makes a lot of noise. As you can hear, it's got a really annoying whine, which is going to annoy everybody, including myself. And so what I've had to do, I've had to build myself a silencing box. And what you can see down at the bottom there is where the air is now coming out. And so consequently what I can do is I can close my workshop door. It's just about there. It's now down to a whisper out here, so it's not too bad at all. Yeah. There's a, still that whine there, but it's not a terrible loud whine now. So that's a significant change that I've had to make. 
Now, just underneath here, you'll see that I've actually purchased a bigger air assist pump. Now, it delivers about probably 10 times as much flow as this one. But at the end of the day, by the time you try and force it down the pipework, you can only get about twice as much flow through the, uh, through the nozzle. But this one has been working for a year now, and it's been working quite hard. And somehow I think it seems to be a little bit laboured. So I thought, well, I'll get this one so that when this one packs up, I can fit this one. So in the not too distant future, there'll be a video of me fitting and testing that. As a part of improving the general performance of this machine, I finished up making my own copper mirrors. And those copper mirrors have been in here for about five months now. Yeah, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. Yeah, best part of six months now they've been in. So this is the first time that this mirror has been out since I put it in. And in fact, you saw me fitting it on video. There is a small amount of oxidation on the surface, a very small amount, but it's only when you catch it in the light. I'm absolutely sure the reflectivity at 10.6 microns wavelength is not going to be affected by that at all, because when I did my reflectance tests with very crude raw copper, which was well and truly oxidized on the surface, it was still giving something like about 96 or 97 percent reflectivity and so I'm very confident that that is still delivering quite a reasonable amount of power. I might have lost half a percent if that. We will go back and check that very shortly and I'll do a proper test on it to see just what the power drop has been across these mirrors in six months. So to sum up, after a year, would I go through the same thing again? Well, <laughs> that's a very difficult answer to give because because the machine was not perfect and I found so many small niggly problems with it and there was so much that I didn't understand, I have learned a huge amount in the last year. Um, if I'd have had the perfect machine and I needed to run it for a business, then I'd have probably been, can I be crude and say pissed off with the machine um, because all I want to do is use it. For me, it was a recreational exercise for my retirement and it served its purpose extremely well. And apart from the videos that I've made, I've also made hundreds of really very good friends from around the world. And all I'd like to say is thank you very much for all of you who have spoken to me and written to me uh, and participated in this learning experience that I'm, ha I'm having and I'm still learning. So thank you all again for participating and joining me in my, in my venture. Um, and the story continues.